Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Tales from the Heart, a podcast from the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Association. I am Lisa Salberg, founder and CEO of the HCMA, and today we're going to take a slightly different tact because I want to introduce somebody to the community that is a bit broader, and I'm going to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Matt Martinez. And Matt, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself like I don't know who you are, where you got your education and what you specialize in, sure. because I'm hoping that people that don't typically listen to Tales from the Heart are going to take a listen to this one. So sure. I'm Matt Martinez. I'm a clinical cardiologist. I uh, specialize in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and have done that for more than a 12 to 15, 12 years or so. I've been, um, I'm a sports cardiologist and we'll talk a little bit more about that. I did all of my training at the Mayo Clinic. I went to medical school there, my residency. I did a fellowship, an advanced fellowship on top of that in MRI, CT, echo and nuclear imaging, stayed on staff briefly and then moved out to the East Coast and have been here ever since, been here about 15 years or so. I have specific interest in athletes and in care of athletes, uh, evaluating athletes, those at risk for sudden death, those who have had uh, known sudden death risk factors and, and markers, those who have coronary disease and other types of heritable diseases, including hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and all that goes in with uh, to that. And I am excited here to talk to you about uh, the new frontier. We've learned quite a bit about COVID in athletes in the last two years. I was the first author on the paper looking at COVID and professional athletes, and I was part of the steering committee for COVID and the NCAA athletes, and I've written a number of consensus documents about how to evaluate COVID and cardiovascular risk, including return to play for athletes. Additionally, you hold some positions with the American College of Cardiology. I'm the previous chair of the sports and exercise. I'm the immediate past chair of the sports and exercise section for the American College of Cardiology. I work with uh, the NCAA on their medical committee. I'm the cardiologist for the Jets, Major League Soccer, and for the NBA Players Association. So this morning, I became aware of something on social media and I copied it and I sent it to you via text message. And I said, Hey, what do you think of this approach? And um, then I said, I think we need to do a podcast today to get some clear information out to the community because I'm afraid that misinformation may be, may be being disseminated. Um, so as point of clarity and reference, Back in around 2013-14, the HCMA and other organizations in the state of New Jersey, um, we came to a culmination of a task force that was formed on the problem of sudden cardiac arrest in young athletes. A number of laws were passed or improved upon as a result of this act, and they are currently known as New Jersey Statute C.18A colon 40-41.6, and this discusses the very specific criteria that are required to not only conduct a sports participation physical, um, but also about training of the individuals doing those screenings. And there is a state website that is cited in the, in the description um, that explains what the training is and, and the training you can actually take online. Um, so my shock this morning was um, a local medical practitioner who happens to be a doctor of osteopathy, stated, has a sign on his door that student sports, phys uh, excuse me, student athlete sports physicals are done primarily to address high risk of sudden death on the playing field. And his statement is that COVID vaccinations affect your risk. I'm gonna stop there for a second. We got two lines into the statement. Dr. Martinez, do COVID vaccines impact somebody's risk of cardiac arrest? So it's such an important topic, and I am delighted to address this with you as uh, families want to know, players want to know, 
And this is in incorrect. That statement is just not true. It's not what we used to, it's not early in this pandemic. We were learning more about it. We have an enormous amount of data. We recently published about a week or so ago, really the up-to-date state-of-the-art cardiovascular assessment. And I'll put that in the chat here in a minute, if, if you don't, Lisa, um, to address all of these concerns. And the short answer is myocarditis is a rare rare complication of COVID-19 mRNA vaccination. It's much lower risk compared to the risk associated with COVID-19, regardless of your age and sex. And what they're taking advantage of is that there is a signal for higher risk in young males aged 12 to 29. And th th that risk is, uh, uh, depending on the study you're talking about, it's somewhere in the 0.003% risk, exceedingly low. And the fact that you're going to subject athletes somewhat shaming them for protecting themselves with a COVID-19 vaccination is, is just simply inappropriate. And doing additional testing on that group because you are looking for something that is exceedingly rare and the testing that's recommended probably wouldn't be the right test Anyway, it's really important to recognize that that's not correct. So COVID-19 vaccination is safe. It is something that individuals, who, especially those that are high risk for complications from COVID-19, require that vaccine for their own safety. And that's a family discussion that parents should have and families should have for sure. And, and we outline all of that in that document. So COVID-19, the virus has a rare complication of cardiac complications and the vaccine has an even lower risk by a lot compared to the virus itself. So we absolutely encourage those who are eligible for the vaccine to get the vaccine. So I'm gonna dive into the rest of the statement from this individual, which I, I have now recently learned has been circulating through certain methods around the internet. Um, so this is not the only one who's doing it. Um, they're claiming that in response to a worldwide experience uh, and vaccine monitoring, they've adopted a new policy. And if your child is vaccinated, he will not sign off on authorization to participate in sports unless they do lab work and an echocardiogram. So you've just said that the vaccine does not increase risk to that degree, to any significant degree, and that the testing that they're suggesting that one would have to partake in before being released back to sports activity has no scientific basis to it, does it? All correct. Not the correct evaluation for, for this group. And this notion that everyone who has a sports physical sign-off policy is somewhat comical, right? It is a it's a now, controversial hold on one second. We, we just had a, a audio glitch there and I do not want to miss this. Try talking again. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh oh, we've lost you there for a second. Let's give it a second to come back. Okay, there you are. You're back now. You're back? My okay. internet became unstable for a minute. Okay. My apologies. I'm ready. Okay, so echo EKG lab tests is is there any of this testing that is required before a student athlete returns back to sports after having a vaccination 100% no there is it, it we have learned quite a bit about the the virus as well as the vaccine over the last 12 to 24 months and what we now know is that in those who are asymptomatic who have mild to moderate non non cardiopulmonary symptoms so at no chest pressure, no breathlessness, uh, no palpitations, not feeling like you're going to pass out, or had a remote infection greater than three months ago without any ongoing symptoms, zero cardiac testing is required. That includes if you're a professional athlete, a collegiate athlete, a high school athlete, a recreational athlete. There's no indication for testing absent cardiopulmonary symptoms. In the event that you have cardiopulmonary symptoms, you see your cardiologist and he or she will decide about the next testing, which we refer to now as triad testing, ECG, echo, and a blood test in some individuals who have those symptoms and perhaps additional testing beyond that if necessary. 
but in the absence of cardiopulmonary symptoms, routine cardiac testing is inappropriate and not necessary. If you could speak to school administrators who might get a note from a doctor saying, I'm not releasing this student because of vaccination status, what should they understand about this philosophy? It's not vetted in science. And if that is the policy that that individual doesn't want to clear, quote, clear somebody because of the potential risk related to the vaccine, I would, I would want to dive into that a little bit further and make sure that there aren't any active symptoms that perhaps we don't know about. But as a routine blanket policy, that's not appropriate. And we should seek another opinion that an additional provider, one who understands the active science right now, should be, about, should be evaluating our athletes for their own safety. So routine cardiac testing after a vaccine is not acceptable. And if that's the, the party line, we should find a different party. <laughs> oh, I couldn't agree more with that one. Additionally, I want to bring something to the attention of those who are listening who might say, well, let's just be careful and get that screening done. This is not without significant expense. And it is not without the possibility and the very high likelihood that your insurance company is not going to pay for this because what is the clinical validation for ordering the test? You're going to say, why are you ordering it? Well, they had a vaccine. Well, there is no national standards for this. There's no clinical relevance to doing this test. So your insurance company is likely going to hand that bill right on back to mom and dad, which could be several hundred dollars in, in uncovered medical expenses. So there's some financial issues here as well. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And, and this is not my opinion, right? I'm not just deciding that this is a vetted consensus document that's published. This is what insurance companies are going to use to look to see what should be covered or not. And I'll take it a step further. The other added risk to this is there are small changes that can occur on an ECG or an echo or even that blood test that, he, that, that that's being referred to that are normal findings in an athlete. They're expected findings, but they can look abnormal and can hold athletes out of competition for no reason at all. For instance, if you, if you get the blood test that we're referring to, a troponin in an otherwise healthy individual without any cardiopulmonary symptoms, and they've exercised vigorously within 24 hours, there's a reasonable chance it will be elevated. We expect that. In fact, when we wrote that guidance, we said hold athletes out from exercise for 24 to 48 hours before checking a troponin value. So there's also added harm beyond the finances that you may find and in a, you may lead yourself down a rabbit hole of inappropriate testing, looking for somebody with expertise, somebody who sees athletes like I do on a regular basis, it may be difficult to, to find and can lead your athlete to miss an entire season while they're waiting to be evaluated for something that's completely normal and should never been tested before. That's really important for a short high school or short collegiate season. You may lose an entire year for no reason at all. Okay. So we have added some citations. I will be publishing a letter as well. We are going to be sending this letter out to all of the high schools in, in the Northern New Jersey area who may have had this. I will make this letter available via Facebook, via LinkedIn, Everywhere else, I've got the citation here that Matt has just given me that I will pop onto to Facebook in a few minutes as well with the new AJ, uh, the uh, Jack um, article. Um, and these are all open access articles, so you don't need to be a member to read them. Uh, we want everybody to read them. We want everybody to be into the science no question. No question. and the facts and the reality. And we don't want people doing things unnecessarily. Um, we don't want to scare people. Uh, we don't want to shame anybody, vaccinated or non-vaccinated. We want to deal in reality. And I think this, this posting today, literally, <laughs> I, I woke up a little angry this morning because <laughs> there's just so much misinformation in these few lines um, that we really need to stand up to truth here. 
And we don't want people to have the wrong tests at the wrong time for the wrong reasons and have all the downhill consequences that could potentially happen negatively. Um, 100%. So I'm going to wrap with a couple of very easy questions. Um, Dr. Martinez, cardiologist, sports cardiologist. Is there any risk to a young athlete getting a vaccine for COVID? So as we mentioned, the risk is exceedingly low. And right now the benefits outweigh the risk. So if, if, you're, if you've decided you, you, you want to get the vaccine, you ought to. And that if you have cardiopulmonary symptoms after the vaccine, those are the individuals you should be looked at, that should be looked at. In addition, there's no current data that suggests there's long-term sequelae, even in those who have that rare complication. So if you're in that 0.004 percent uh, individuals who get a complication from the vaccine. So far, there's no signal to suggest there's any harm related to that. It's a different mechanism, we think, than viral induced myocarditis. So the benefits outweigh the risks. You should absolutely get a vaccine in those who want to get a vaccine for sure. Secondly, for those who have active COVID, and have myocarditis and are young athletes, would you screen those individuals differently? So if you have COVID and symptoms, as we, as we mentioned earlier, if you have COVID and as part of your initial presentation or your return to exercise, once you're symptom free, you're gonna to start to exercise again. If you have chest pressure, breathlessness, racing heartbeat, that's the group that ought to be investigated. So that's the group where you're gonna look into that triad testing, absent cardiopulmonary symptoms, no cardiac testing is needed. So routine evaluation after COVID-19 for cardiac complications, not warranted any longer. The data does not support it. Is there anything else people should know about sports, and COVID and vaccines or anything else that we need to tell them today? I think that it's important to know that if you are exposed to COVID and you are testing positive for that, symptoms are now most important. Following that is critical at this stage. So if you have symptoms afterwards, then we wanna hear from you. If you don't, once the symptoms resolve, let's start that, that normal post-viral return to exercise plan. A little bit of exercise, then a little more, and a little more, and a little more. That's the next step after you have COVID-19. Matt, thank you for taking a break from your very, very busy day to Happy come and day. clear the air here. And we're gonna hope that this uh, little interview goes far and wide on social media. So we dis dispense with truth and honesty. And Joe Caruso just said hi on Facebook. <laughs> Love you, Joe. Okay. Matt, thank you so much for taking the time today. And thank you all for listening. Have a great day. Thanks for doing it. Bye, everybody.